Lenovo's ThinkPad series seems to have a timelessness to them. Clad in an aluminum shell and also a soft touch material, these laptops are meant to last. Designed for the corporate user who's always on the go, these laptops are durable and their design of the years hasn't really evolved or changed. Hey guys, here are OS Reviews. So today we're taking a retro look back at the Lenovo ThinkPad X Series X61 convertible Despite tablet. Long out of production, the Lenovo ThinkPad X61 can still pass as a modern day ThinkPad in many different ways. First of all, it's a 12.1 inch ultra portable device, so it is very small and lightweight. And unlike, un unlike most 12.1 inch laptop computers, you can see that it has a very square-like shape, which means it has a 4 by 3 aspect ratio, kind of similar to a modern day iPad, which makes it better for doing things like word processing and also working on Excel or PowerPoints and productivity rather than perhaps watching a widescreen movie. Still, its scourge form factor makes traveling with the device really, really easy, and we'll certainly discuss that in a moment. Now, when the device first came out, its retail price was quite expensive. Lenovo priced the X61 at $3,000, uh, or about $2,151 for the base model, and it goes all the way up. Uh, with accessories and so that's pretty expensive for an ultra portable and in today's standards that is way way too expensive um, but at the time actually it was a reasonable price to pay for something with these specifications speaking of it had an intel core 2 dual processor which ran at 1.6 gigahertz it had a 1 gigabyte of ram which was upgradable had an 80 gigabyte hard drive and also wi-fi ethernet windows vista professional edition uh, or business product business edition depending on the version that you purchase and there's also a biometric fingerprint scanner and also a wacom enabled touchscreen digitizer for pressure sensitivity so specifications even if even in today's standards aren't too bad and it still can play YouTube videos and stream some video content online without too much stuttering. So it can still work pretty nicely in today's standards if you don't do too many demanding tasks like gaming or anything like that. Taking a look at the design, again it's pretty generic as far as ThinkPads go, but we have a energy efficient logo on the top. This side here is the battery. It's actually a rubberized, which makes it pretty easy to hold. And there's some LED indicators for the power and the uh, battery charging indications on the sides. The right hand corner features the uh, connection to a SATA hard drive, also two USB 2.0 ports. There's also a 3.5 mil headphone jack and also a 3.5 jack for a microphone input. On the side here is the Ethernet or a modem port and also the proprietary Lenovo ThinkPad charger and also a lock switch. And there's nothing on the very back. Again, it's relatively slim for a computer that was produced over almost 10 years now uh, ago. So that's pretty good in terms of the slimness for something that's over, over a decade old. Um, on the left-hand side, there's access to the third USB 2.0 port and also a VGA port for video output. There's another modem port. And there's also, of course, a PCMA CIA slot for any expansion slots and also a full SD card reader, which is good. Over here is the uh, ejectable spring-loaded um, slot for the pen or the Wacom digitizer, which you can use to access the touchscreen display. On the back, it's basically just the device itself with some rubber feet, which pre prevents the laptop from sliding around when it's sitting on a desk surface. So to open up the entire hinge, we simply prop it open by pushing the switch on the side, and you're revealed to a infamous uh, Lenovo ThinkPad style keyboard. Now ThinkPads are known for having really, really strong keyboards, and the X61 is no exception. The keys are exceptionally tactile, they're springy, they feel like almost a mash between a modern day keyboard and a mechanical keyboard. They're large, and even for a ultra portable, it feels, some, it feels like a full size keyboard even though it isn't. And as far as typing is considered, the X61 for me has one of the best keyboards even in 2015 out of all the 12.1 ultra portables that I've tested. Um, it's just exceptionally tactile, it's exceptionally easy to get a claim to the keyboard, and I found myself typing with little errors, uh, with you know little to no errors at all when I was doing some word processing and emailing early on. Now, as with most ThinkPads, there's an infamous uh, ThinkPad button on the side here, the vantage point, um, as opposed to a traditional touchpad down below here, which in my opinion, something a little bit more silly, but I guess if you do a lot of typing and your hands rest on, this, on the palm rest, um, it's a good feature to have if you want really a high level of precision for going through your different documents um, and so on and so forth. But it definitely takes a bit of acclimation if you're used to touchpads to transition into this cursor for the mouse. Um, the spring bar here is actually, the space bar here is very tactile. There is no issues as far as pressing to the left or to the right. Everything feels really centered and really evenly uh, spaced as far as the springiness of the keyboard is considered. On the side, you see some branding for the device itself. And on the very top row, there are a few dedicated controls for ThinkVantage, which is a special application for the uh, controls on the device, like the fingerprint scanner and so on and so forth. And there's also some volume controls that are tactile and easy to press. 
On the center is a power on and off switch, and on the top are some dedicated rows and icons. On the top right hand corner, we have access to a biometric fingerprint scanner, which is very easy to set up, a five-way navigation toggle if you don't want to use the touchscreen display, and on the other side, there are some other controls for screen orientation. Uh, there's actually a built-in auto rotation sensor. There is an accelerometer, so the device will automatically rotate the screen depending on the orientation, which is pretty nice. There's also a power on and off switch directly on the screen, a lock switch for the screen orientation, and also you have access to an escape button. So the screen rotates to the right, so I can twist it all the way around like so, and then have it kind of sit down. Um, it actually is pretty good. The screen, as far as displays are considered, actually had a pretty good resolution at the time, and it has a transflect, not a transflective material, but a anti-gloss material, which makes it kind of matte and resist any fingerprints and also resist any glare from sunlight if you're using it outdoors, which means that the display is totally viewable even if you're typing or using it outdoors. So it's a good feature to have. Uh, you notice that the actual bar on the bottom here is now on the outside, uh, outside layer for the um, clamp. So in order to press it to make it more flush and to prevent the screen from opening, we press it down and now it's all the way locked. I can release it again by pressing that and then press it all the way up again. So it's kind of a unique latch mechanism that we haven't seen before either. So an interesting design as far as hardware is concerned, we are fans of the overall look of the X61 even in today's As mentioned, the performance of the Lenovo ThinkPad X61 is still pretty good in terms of web general web browsing and general productivity in today's standards. Right now we have a uh, browser open by Firefox, and we can see that everything loads pretty well as far as web browsing is concerned. Wi-Fi is still pretty speedy and quick, so if we wanted to search for something like OS reviews, we can see that the keyboard is, again, very springy and responsive, and it makes typing a joy and also really easy to use. Um, actually, we're, we're in a three-story building right now, and the Wi-Fi network is actually on the first building, so it's quite a bit of a distance from the Wi-Fi signal, but you can see how performance is still relatively snappy as far as uh, general performance is concerned. And this being an ultra portable, again, you're not going to expect lightning fast performance um, in the first place just because of the size and the small portfolio and form factor of the laptop in general. So taking a look here, you can see how we have YouTube loaded up and all the different icons for YouTube will load. And you can see all the elements of YouTube also work as well. The speaker is quite powerful, and you can see how it's playing back sound pretty loudly and richly, despite the device having, um, you know, you know, relatively um, low amount of memory. It still does a pretty good job of playing back YouTube videos, and again, the entire speaker itself is actually pretty good in terms of playing back sound as well. You can, of course, use your headphones if that's what you want to do, and you can also scrub back and forth between different videos. Full screen mode is going to be a little bit slower, but you can still do that if you want to. Again, YouTube and video playback isn't the forte of the X61 just because it has a 4x3 aspect ratio, but reading documents and browsing the web, it does work very well. Let's try something more complex like the New York Times. New York Times tends, uh, tends to be more of a benchmark for um, more complex sites with a lot of different elements in the, in the site itself. So if we can load that up, we can see how well it does. Again, productivity is still going to be a highlight for this particular ultra portable. The battery life is strong at about five hours or so, even in today's standards, and it has the ability to do a pretty good job of doing Word, Excel, and PowerPoint editing. And of course, with the tablet form factor, you could always choose uh, to go through and use the pen to draw, to annotate, and to create different documents, and also to draw and um, create different notes for classes if you are a student, which works pretty well. Um, so right now we have Open Office here, which is Roughly the same as far as performance is considered as a regular word, um, but it isn't pre-installed. And you can see how everything works just fine. It's pretty fast and relatively responsive. Taking a look at the uh, security features of this laptop, again, fairly strong, just because it has that fingerprint scanner built in. We have the Vantage Point uh, fingerprint technology built in. This is a tutorial that's going to tell us how to do this, and it's going to tell us to scan our fingers. So I'm going to try scanning it, and it actually seems to have read it pretty well. Um, so you can see our finger point scanner is actually down here, and I'm going to scan it again. And it seemed to read it pretty well. This is a misread, but let's try scanning that one more time. I am going to go back, and this is actually an animation that tells us how to do that. Let's try that one more time. It's scanned. Successful. Successful. And so it actually does a pretty good job of, in terms of reading back fingerprints, and you can easily set that up to have a higher degree of customization and password protection if you don't want to use the built-in password on. Uh, we have XP on this particular model. 
Again, you can browse the web. This is the New York Times. You can see that it loads pretty well. As far as web browsing is concerned, it does a really good job just because the 4 by 3 aspect ratio is quite comfortable for reading text and also for graphics. Um, not the greatest for watching videos, but very good for watching images and also reading articles on the web. You can see how the most complex page in the web, the New York Times is a good benchmark for that, has loaded up without any issues at all. So it's quite impressive. There are no checkerboard patterns, anything like that. Everything is smooth, it's lucid, and responsive. So performance is still quite impressive in today's st uh, standards. Pretty snappy for a um, mini ultra portable with a 12 inch screen. So over here we have some more applications like uh, Think Vantage, we have some games built in, and of course you can install loads and loads more of applications just because it's running on a stock version of Windows XP with touch input installed. So you can install a few games if you want to do that, but you can't use your fingers. It has to be with the Wacom Digitizer. Speaking of, the Digitizer pen can be purchased for $10 if you want a secondary model, and the pen itself is pressure sensitive. So graphic artists can install things like Corel Draw or Adobe Photoshop, and as far as they press using the pen harder, it's going to be a darker line that's going to appear on screen. The only element where the Ultra Portable here is actually kind of falling behind the competition would be for the actual uh, webcam, because there isn't a webcam on this model, uh, which can be a high or a low, depending on the level of security, if you want to use this for your job or for your work. Um, but for general students, again, for using this device, it's a, a mission that's going to be a bit disappointing, but they could always plug in a USB. At the end of the day, we still are fans of the Lenovo ThinkPad X61, even almost after a decade since, uh, since its original release. It is a really nice Ultra Portable with nice attention to detail in terms of the build quality, and the performance is still not shabby either, which is a bit of a shock, um, seeing how the device, again, is getting quite old. But still, we love the build quality, we love the size, the form factor, the overall fit and finish, and the overall design is, again, pretty classic. You can check out our original review for this ultra-portable laptop that was published way back in 2007 on our website. Thanks for watching this retro review here at OS Reviews.